Hello, so today's going to be all about making pads. Uh, first, we're going to be sort of solidifying our knowledge about how pads are made, and then we're going to be using this knowledge to make pads out of anything, anything at all. By the end of this video, I'm hoping that you'll just have a whole bunch of new confidence so when it comes to pads, you won't be getting stuck. If you are someone that does get stuck in the production process often, then I highly recommend checking out our free music production handbook in the description below. So what constitutes making a pad? Um, I would just split it down into two parts. So I have this uh, blank uh, wavetable here. And what really makes a pad is uh, firstly the ADSR envelope. So uh, we can't have a pad when the sustain is all the way at zero because it just sort of, it just, it, it becomes a pluck, right? It becomes a pluck. So we need, uh, we need sustain. We need sustain for a pad. Uh, we generally want a slow attack time. So it sort of like slowly glides into the sound. And then we want a little bit of release as well. So this is all that really what is necessary for the base, the real base element of what makes a pad uh, or a very simple pad at that. So if I was to change this uh, oscillator over here, then it would just like sort of change the texture, the timbre of the, of the sound itself. So this is step one in making a pad. The ADSR envelope, we need some sustain, we need a little bit of a slower attack, and we need a little bit of release. Uh, those three things to make a pad sounding sound. Uh, we probably also want some polyphony and uh, a chord playing, right? Uh, the next step is movement, and we can achieve movement via processing. Uh, we can also achieve movement via something like unison. Uh, we can we can achieve movement via um, via modulation and uh, and mapping and LFOs things like this. So now with a bit of movement, my pad is a whole bunch more interesting. Right. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna grab this uh, filtered modulation rack, which is just a, a bunch of echo and reverb. So now we have a whole bunch of movement and it sounds really lush and nice. So these are the real core ingredients of what is needed to make a pad. The, uh, the notes on that ADSR envelope and then a bit of movement, uh, maybe a little bit of processing. Uh, and we can really apply this concept to any sound to turn any sound into a pad. So now moving on, uh, if I just collapse this and bring up this synth here, I have this synth sample. It just sounds like this, right? Just a little plucky synth sound that I've found. So I want to turn this into a pad. What do I do? What do I do? So I'm actually going to put it into a MIDI track. So I've got my MIDI track here selected. I'm just gonna grab this clip and drag it in there. And so now it's being triggered by this MIDI track and I can actually play it polyphonically as well, right? Uh, but what, what the, our first problem is the ADSR envelope. We don't have any sustain. So if I just click and hold this note, it's gonna play through and then stop, right? So there's no sustain, uh, even though the sustain in this envelope is, a hun is all the way up. Uh, so the way we want to fix this is by hitting this loop button. And if I just go in here and sort of just zoom in, uh, it's going to show me uh, the, the region in which it's going to loop now. So I've hit the loop button. And if I hit play and hold my finger down, you can see it's going to loop over and over. But you can see it's very obvious in, in how it's looping. We want it to be a little bit more discreet. So if I just uh, slide down this loop button, button, you can see that the loop is going to be looping in this uh, highlighted area over here. And then I can slide up this fade button and so make it so it's a little bit more smoothly looping. So that's what we want. So now I'm holding my finger down and it's sustaining. Now we have the sustain stage of our ADSR envelope. That's the first box ticked. Now we can sort of play around with the attack over here and also uh, put a little bit more release on as well. And now if I play a chord. Right, so now we have uh, the, the basis of what makes a pad. 
Now we just need step two, some movement. So I'm going to go over to controls here. There's actually an LFO already built into uh, this simpler device. I'm just going to map a bit of pitch to it. I'm going to map a little bit of volume to it and let's see how it goes. Right, maybe a bit of filter. I'm going to bring this filter down a bit. Maybe you bring it down a bit more. So now it's sounding a little bit more lush, sounding a little bit better. Maybe, maybe even a little bit of pan modulation. That's quite nice. Uh, you could add some reverb. We've got reverb on a send over here. We could even just chuck on this filtered modulation and see how that goes. So now we have a nice pad easily made out of this sound here. Right? So again, just that ADSR envelope and some movement and there you have it. It's really as simple as that. There's not that much going on. And uh, just to sort of really drive the point home that you can make a pad out of anything. I've got this kick drum here. Right? This is just a, a, a regular kick drum sample. Nothing, nothing special about it. There's not really much, much tone to it. There is a little bit of tone, but it's not the point. Uh, I'm just going to drag it into this MIDI track again. Let's make a pad out of this. So the only real difference here is that instead of looping a section of the audio, uh, we're just going to be looping a smaller section of the audio. And that way we can actually create an oscillator out of anything. We can create an oscillator out of literally looping anything. If it's a small enough loop, it becomes like an oscillator. So if I just drag this loop marker down, in fact, I'm gonna hold my finger on this note and move this loop marker around and you'll see what I mean. So we can make an oscillator, this turns into an oscillator, it turns actually into a note. So if, if I'm to, you know, take like this, this full, you know, su double cycle here, I can then, uh, I can then actually play this polyphonically and like pitch it around and that and that becomes a pad right it becomes a pad because we have our sustain right and then we have our release over here we have our attack as well so let's let's start playing some pad things right and now we can uh, just go for the same thing go for some movement I'm gonna grab my uh, modulation rack as well. By the way, if you want to learn how to how I made this modulation rack, just an auto filter with uh, before a reverb and the same thing, uh, and the the auto filters moving around. I can link leave a link to where I've built this rack in a different video. Uh, and so with this uh, little bit of movement now, now we have uh, this nice pad. So just to take this a step further, um, it, it's really fun making pads out of stuff like this. It's not really using any of the characteristics of the sound uh, though. So what we can do is sort of just mess around with this until we find a nice sound. So that's quite gritty. That's actually quite cool as well. Uh, what I often like doing is messing around with the actual transient of the sound because this is where the real uh, real nice information is and then once you start off with a really textual and rich sound then you can sort of start to sculpt away so I can bring this uh, filter frequency down over here and then So you can use uh, samples just like this, and 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 play around with them and mess around with them, and literally just make pads out of anything, out of any sound source. You can turn any sound source into an oscillator via looping it, and you're essentially just creating like a wavetable which we're scrolling through here. That's what's happening, right? So the same concept obviously applies when it when we come to, when it comes to vocals uh, and why vocals can be used nicely for pads is because you can find 
uh, larger sections of audio that have a nice constant pitch to them. And then we can use that and play that polyphonically, make a little bit of ADSR envelope and vo voila, we have a pad as well. So uh, let's just look here. I think, I think that sort of section in there has a nice pitch uh, that's being held. So I'm just going to drag this over to my MIDI clip over here. And uh, that's that's a little uh, a little cheat as well. If you if you highlight the section that you you actually like, and then drag that over into the MIDI clip, it'll just automatically highlight that section for you. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is actually find a nice loop in here. And the thing about you you can use warp over here, and you can and go to Complex Pro so that so that uh, when you pitch it around, it doesn't sound so chipmunk. It sounds a little bit less chipmunky. But the only thing about warp is that once you turn it on, uh, you can no longer fade over here. You can no longer fade uh, the loop. So I want to I want to get this loop. Uh, change these. I actually want to fade this loop so it's a little. So I think I usually get better results when I actually leave warp off, and then just. Play around with the uh, play around with the chords. So let's change this ADSR envelope. Bring up the uh, attack a bit as well. It's actually kind of cool. Um, maybe we can put some reverb on there as well. So it's quite harsh. So let's bring back a little bit of this filter. So you can see uh, the general process here is the exact same. But in this case, we're using a vocal snippet and we're using a little bit of a, a constant pitch that we can find uh, in a vocal to create a pad out of that. Okay, so I wanted to end the video on one uh, different method of making pads. And, and this is uh, a, a process that I used to do actually quite often. Uh, this is nice for sort of ambient droning pads. It's also good for uh, effects. We can create effects out of this. What we're going to be doing is making a pad out of uh, something we have in our project. So let's say we've built a track. Uh, we've, we've, we've built a big track out of, um, out of this sample here. I'm just going to repeat this kick drum over and we can, we can play this, these two things together. And so let's say that this synth, you know, we worked on it, we made it, and let's just pretend that it's not a synth loop that I just grabbed from the sample library. Um, and, uh, and, and this is our, you know, main synth, and we want to make a pad out of this. Uh, what I would do, you know, let's say I've got some reverb on this synth and we want to record that reverb in there as well. I just re record this into another track. So record it into a resampling track over here. I'm just going to hit solo. Maybe turn the volume up a bit and hit record. And once we have this recorded, uh, I'm, I'm just going to sort of minimize this and turn this off. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually go grab uh, a, a device. Uh, it's called Paul Stretch. Paul Stretch. So Paul, what Paul Stretch is, it's a software that uh, is going to stretch the audio that you put in there by however much you want. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever seen like a 10 hour long Mario theme song that's been stretched into oblivion. Uh, that's probably using Paul Stretch. Um, and it just stretches the audio so much that it just becomes a pad, pretty much. It becomes a drone. Uh, so if I was to, uh, so this this is actually a door integrated version of Paul Stretch. Paul Stretch is free, by the way, also, um, but it it works uh, not uh, as a part of the door. If I drag the sample in here, it's going to start stretching it straight away, whether I'm playing or not. So let's drag it in here. And so you can hear that going. Uh, I've just muted it over here. Uh, but this stretch amount here, that's that's how much it's going to be stretching. So if I drag it all the way over here, it's going to be stretching it by, you know, 1,024 times the length. Uh, so this is two times, two times the two times the length. Let's just put it up to maybe like 12 and see see what it sounds like. Yeah. 
So you can hear that it's scanning through really slowly and it's got a whole bunch of algorithms going on to make it sound uh, nice and smooth. Uh, you can also uh, go to the octaves section. I'm going to just turn this on. If it, yep, yep, turns on there, and um, and you can you can put octave uh, one octave and two octaves up, and have a listen to that. You know, uh, this this thing also has uh, like filters built into it, so you can do a lot of crafting with the sound in this thing. So uh, I'm just going to take those octaves off. Uh, and and really, I'm actually just going to uh, grab an auto filter and just drag it behind this uh, down here. And that way I can just like filter it with this Ableton auto filter instead. So I'm just going to hit play here. And so so now we can we can use that we can use this auto filter to filter it instead. So what what I'm going to do here is actually um, is actually just re-record the audio coming out of Paul Stretch back into an audio track. So maybe I'll use this one this time and put this onto resampling and maybe even just mute this audio here because that's not the audio being used. It's the audio in Paul Stretch over here. And and then I'm just going to record it in here and uh, we're going to start manipulating this audio. Let's have a go. So I'm recording and I'm just going to go over here and hit play. I'm actually going to turn off this filter. Mess around with this maybe. All right, so we've got this audio that we've just uh, gone in here. I probably could have turned it up. So before recording, I probably could have uh, actually just turned up turned up the, the main volume here because it actually reduces the volume a bit. So that's my bad, but um, it's it's still the same concept here. So if, I, if I'm if i just to like sort of uh, stretch this, extend this sample out, you can, we can see the, the contents in it. And then I can, uh, I'm actually just gonna turn this up in here. Now I can sort of start manipulating and layering it with, uh, with the original sample. So this just means that we're gonna have a, a pad that's sort of created that sounds very similar to this and that works with your track no matter what. So this is a good way of creating a pad that's gonna fit, you know it's gonna fit with your track. And if you want that sort of ambient drone of a pad, then that's, that's, that's great. Uh, you can use the same techniques that we talked about to create, you know, the, the ADSR envelope and the movement, or I can simply just leave it as, as it is and just have it in the background and, uh, and put some, some, some processing on there. You know, maybe I could uh, add a, a bit of attack. So this is kind of like our attack and this is kind of like our release over here. We could even do something like this, where we just make it a bit like a bit of like an effect. So I'm just going to uh, swell in here, and then I'm just going to sort of uh, release and swell out. So let's just have a listen to how this goes. So that is a nice uh, sort of swelling in effect, uh, and it works and it's smooth because this is actually created out of this sample. Let's have another listen. That's a cool effect. Uh, there's a lot of different ways in which you can be creative and use this and sort of experiment with modulation and movement, phases and choruses and filters and uh, turning this thing into a pad as well. So this is just a technique that I wanted to quickly bring up before the end of the video. So you have just an extra technique, an extra way of creating pads uh, out of things that are in your project. So I hope that you've enjoyed the video today and you've uh, become just a little bit more confident with uh, the mechanisms of what creates pads uh, and how we can just really create pads out of anything. Like the door is so flexible, so much freedom in there. Uh, and if you do have other ways that you know how to make pads, if you have other techniques that you like using, leave any suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to have a read. If you did like the video today, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. As always, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.